All right, Bay, you ready to get this pod turnt? You ready oh. to get it? You ready to get it? What? Yeah, we're gonna get this this extra AF pod. Come on, let's go. What What is this? I'm talking trendy. We're gonna mm-hmm. get trendy so we can get young, hip kids. You know, you're just acting salty. <laughs> you're just acting salty, <laughs> brah. Oh no! Please stop. Hey, you may think I'm being thirsty, but I say that that's just some hunty clapback. Oh, oh, stop, I say Dan. that we're gonna slay. Let's Dan, get our stop. adulting done. Come on, Quit while you're you're throwing behind. shade. Come on, swerve, trolls, ratchet, gla- <laughs> gas. You're just ghost, saying words now. Beat, dank, ghost. You're high just key, saying words. Mom, mom's a trendy word. Okay, savage. You're being savage, Jess. You're like Steve Buscemi in Thirty Rock. He's like, hello, <laughs> fellow kids. Hello, fellow kids. Well, this week the trend was to wake up at 8 a.m. and then promptly fall back to sleep again and not get up until 10. And this week the trend was to borrow all the strength that you could lend to keep my head above water and record this podcast at the 11th hour. It fell off a little bit in the end there, but you get what I'm saying. That's not so bad. Waking up at 10 o'clock. That's not so bad. It's not as bad as three. You're still going. You're getting it done. You're doing your adulting. I'm doing my adulting. Yeah, you're on fleek. There's been extra adulting recently. <laughs> We've had a very busy couple of weeks. So that's that's been our week. That's been our trend <laughs> of the week. But we're back and we're ready to talk about another song off Mm-hmm. Or as I wanted to call it, Yuppers, because mm-hmm is hard to say. That's it slows right. things down. That's right. So we're here talking about song 12 off of Yuppers called This Week of the Trend. But we got some top of the show business. We oh. do have some stuff. We have some voicemails. Nice. Uh, of our friends trying to make amends because <laughs> they stabbed us in the back. No, oh, no. No, 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 no. We have a voicemail. From Jonathan from Miami. Oh, nice. And this is what he wanted to let us know. Hey, guys. It's Jonathan, uh, it's Jonathan from Miami, Florida. Um, just calling to say that I, I've been loving the podcast and I've, I've uh, been listening to it every day and just repeating a couple of episodes through uh, just to see if I missed something. But uh, I'm looking forward to uh, this week, The Trend. And when, right now, that Reliant K tweeted not so long ago about the 12 songs and everything, I think most Reliant K fans were just like, what do you mean only 12 songs? Out of like 130 or 160 songs that they put out, I think it took me like an hour and a half to actually figure out what 12 songs I would like on a vinyl. And, uh... I just wanted to see if, you agree, if it took you guys just as long also. Anyways, keep it up, guys. Love hearing the podcast. So that was Jonathan from Miami. He's been re-listening to the same episodes. That's so awesome. <laughs> I thought Danny and I were the only ones who did that. Yeah. I'm mostly listening for mistakes. Yeah. <laughs> mostly listening. Maybe he like, is, too. <laughs> did I upload the right version of the episode? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but that's great. Thank you so much, Jonathan. And yeah, thank you. Yeah, um, yeah. It's really was really hard with the news about Reliant. Of I want, just to remind everyone, go to ReliantK.com/vote. That's what everyone should be doing to vote on their twelve favorite songs for the record. B sides only. Yes, please vote for B sides and intros <laughs> and outros and joke songs. Kids on the street. Oh, that's something that can't happen, right? So the Twitter account, the Reliant K main Twitter account pops back in like a week after the, you know, the vote news, the new vinyl news. I have to put them on uh, notifications. I have them on notifications as yeah, well. Yeah, I don't. I have no notifications from Twitter. I try oh, to, you try, try to. Try to keep off of Twitter yeah. a lot. So. <laughs> That's not trendy. We're trying to be trendy this week. I a Notification squad right here. So... When the Reliant K official Twitter popped back in and was like, 
you know, keep voting. Here's the top 12 songs so far and the top 12 songs, which I guess I could read. But before I get to that, my reply <laughs> to their, their... I already know one of them. Deathbed? Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't seem... Guys, <laughs> look. Everybody loves Deathbed. Except for... I know, for, I know one person who doesn't like Deathbed. <laughs> But everybody likes Deathbed. It seems like 90% of the Reliant K You fans don't out need there, to vote for it. It's going to be you, on there. Yeah, you don't need to vote like, for it. Like, I but did this, not vote for Be My Escape. I'm like, everybody knows Be My Escape is going to be on yeah. there. I'm not going to vote for it. Get out there and vote for songs that you want to win. Like, I almost, I actually, I debated voting for Sadie Hawkins Dance. Because I'm like, Sadie Hawkins Dance is so wildly popular. It's absolutely going to be on there. And then I was like, you know what? I think I've been to Reliant K shows where they haven't played it. So I'm like, maybe with like a, so much newer stuff, I need to still support Sadie Hawkins Dance. So, but my thing is, I don't really want Deathbed on the vinyl because it'll take up the space of three other songs. Yeah. And Deathbed is on the second live album. It's, you know, five score, the vinyl is still easy to get. It's not as hard to get as, like, the first two albums. Yeah. So There's enough Deathbed out there. Actually, the first three albums are getting hard to get now on vinyl. But, um, yeah, so Hoops, if it's Hoops running the page, he said the top 12 so far are Forget and Not Slow Down, Deathbed, Sadie Hawkins Dance, Be My Escape, Who I Am, Who Hates, Who I've Been, Must Have Done Something Right, Hate Consequences, Savannah, Pressing On, Chapstick, High of 75, Mood Rings. It's basically everything you would expect. Yeah. Like, we got to get some, like, unexpected ones on there. Yeah. Also. And ones that we don't already have, like, live versions of. And right. Stuff like that. He, they also came, they also tweeted that, and this is what I assumed. This is, I think we talked about this on the podcast last week. That the song, the album isn't going to be twelve songs. It's going to be a double record set. They've already said it's going to be a oh, four good, sided good. record. So it's just going to be however many songs fill up four sides, and with Deathbed on there, which it's looking like that <sighs> might only be twelve songs. That should just be its own separate, like seven inch double sided <laughs> seven go. inch. That's a good idea. Yeah, just. You know, and it just slip it on in there. Doesn't even need a protective sleeve. If it gets scratched, who cares? <laughs> For those diehard Deathbed fans, Jessica only doesn't like Deathbed because it's very upsetting. It's supposed to be nice and uplifting, and hey, he was smoking too many ciggies, so now <laughs> he's gonna die. But she just doesn't like the. We actually cut out a whole thing where Jessica was explained. And it came out of nowhere. Like, I don't know what episode we were doing. We were doing Press It On or something. And Jessica's like, and here is why Deathbed really gets me anxious. We got onto Deathbed for some reason. And I'm like, listen, it sparks my anxiety. I don't like Deathbed. I go to the bathroom when they play it in concert. Like, specifically, I'm like, I have 11 minutes to kill. I'm going to go check out the merch table. I'm going to go to the bathroom. And then I'll come back in for when they do the encore. If this is making anyone mad out there, just... Please remember, Jessica is entitled to her opinion. <laughs> <laughs> Jessica's opinions do not necessarily reflect those of Sadie Hawkins Pod <laughs> LLC or its hosts. <laughs> Actually, wait. Just one of its hosts. Just one of its hosts. Yeah, so that's what's going on with the with um, the vinyl. And then was there any other top of the show stuff? Oh, last week we totally forgot until the very end. And this time we want to thank him at the top of the show. The last two weeks, you've probably noticed we have a new outro song. Yes. Right? And it is a parody of Crayons Could Melt On Us. Yep. And every week, we're going to have to record a different version. Yep. Until we've done enough episodes where hopefully we've done the same amount of minutes because we're always going to end it with, we just wasted however many minutes of your life the podcast turns out to be. Thank you very much to David Park. He's on Twitter at David, at David underscore Park. That's Park with an E. Park with an E. He And he hosts, along with some other people, a Disneyland fan podcast, and his last name is Park. <laughs> it, and doesn't he have a Jimmy Eat World podcast? Oh, too? and that's right. And he's the host of Jimmy Eat Pod, which hasn't come out yet, but they've been talking about it. I think they've recorded a couple episodes. I know they wanted to have like 10 episodes in the can. Oh, wouldn't that be oh, nice? Man. <laughs> <laughs> We're constantly behind the eight ball with this show. It was like our first we got like three in the can and we were like, yeah. Yeah, we had a whole month to just kind of relax and yep. it just 
caught up real quick. Yeah, it did. So, uh, so thank you to David Park for doing the instrument, the instrumentation on instrumental? our the instrumental of crayons can melt in us for all I care. And if you haven't heard it the last two weeks, definitely hear it at the end of the podcast this week because we're doing the other version. Ooh. He didn't just do crayons can melt on us as you might know it. Oh, and then going back to voicemails for just a second, Jonathan called back the next day, but he left a voicemail where he said, hey, you guys don't have to play this on the podcast. He just wanted to let us know that that super tones, softer to me, similar cadence yeah. is because the vocals are eighth notes. So oh. it's like, that, that's, that's, he let me know or let us know that's why, because they're eighth notes. I don't think about stuff being like, eighths or sixteenths or whatever unless it's like applied to the drums because I used to play the drums I don't remember like any of it anymore but I used to but that's very interesting so I won't play Jonathan's later email that he said don't you know don't bother playing and here's just the answer to what's up with software to me and the supertones but the google voice translated what he said in this way hey guys this is Jonathan again from Miami you don't have the money we're trying to use it a lot, and that is using the wrong email to be talking to Thursday. We open up at 4. I'm going to 1600, 3, and 1, be a stripper. But anyway, you guys suck. That's what I'm trying to do. And now... I think we can't play the voicemail. That's he not a very nice message. To send to the <laughs> I know, podcast. Jonathan. He didn't say any of those things, but the Google Voice totally got it out completely wrong. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> you guys don't have the money. <laughs> so anyway, this week the trend. This is a song that has always, since its release, been one of my all-time favorite Reliant K songs. Uh, I voted for it on the fan curated vinyl. Mm -hmm. And it's a message that I think can speak to everyone. Right. This is a common Reliant K theme about yep. Matt Thiessen feeling like he's set back in his relationships. And he doesn't just mean with girls. He means with everyone. Yeah. And trying to, he's he's having trouble and he's, and he's like backstabbing his friends. and Yeah. And the lyrics, I just want to get mugged at knife point to get cut enough to wake me up because I know that I don't want to die sitting around watching my life go by is something that I've always particularly connected with. And it's kind of been like a mantra throughout different points of my life. When I was younger, I really like lived by it. I was very driven and I lived like I had already like gotten cut enough to wake <laughs> up, you know. And now right. that I'm older, it's like I've I've reverted to that feeling of needing to get cut enough to wake up because it's just you get older and things happen and you slow down and you lose that drive for life a little bit and I just need that wake up call, mm. which oh my gosh, so slightly off topic. Oh boy. <laughs> um I found this Reliant K fan quiz, which was which Reliant K song describes All right. you. This is different from this. Is, when you first tell me about this, I'm like, we talked about this last week. But no, you were telling me you found flashcards last week. I found week. flashcard last this week. This week, it's what song are you? Right. Well, I also found some quizzes in that. There's quizzes every week, and we should maybe like dive into those at some point. But this one in particular was, and I have to guess and hope that it was only songs off the first album mm -hmm. based on the questions. And the questions were kind of whatever, but uh, getting Wake Up Call certainly was a wake up call. <laughs> <laughs> so it says, your result, wake up call. You stay up all night just to sleep in all day and repeat the cycle. You lose your loser job at Wendy's because you are such a big loser that you never <sighs> show up to work. I don't even think that's the point of the song. Even worse, your mom has to wake you up and tell you that you lost your job. And just now you're starting to figure out you've been wrecking your life. Yeah. Look, I'm not going to say that they're completely wrong, but I will have you know that I have a very good work ethic. Yeah. And, like, I have had an outstanding track record at all of my previous jobs. Thank you. And maybe Matisse in losing his job at Wendy's was just the thing that he needed to get Reliant K really going. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. What if he hadn't slept in till 3 a.m. and got fired from Wendy's? 
Who are you, Did, Matchbox 20? Didn't you get fired from Wendy's too? No, I quit Wendy's. Oh. And this is so funny because I, the, oh, you know what? <laughs> I got the job at Wendy's and I didn't know this at the time because I was used to the idea that I would talk to Reliant K like basically every year, if not a couple times a year, right? So I got a job at Wendy's in the summer of 2005. And then I, had, and then I quit for reasons I'll tell you specifically. But I was like, oh boy, next time I see Matt Thiessen, I'm going to tell him I had a job at Wendy's just like he had because oh, I was still no. still a dork. <laughs> but I didn't know at that point that I was never actually going to talk directly to Matt Thiessen ever again. Oh, like I saw right. him, he, like he, I saw him um, at the Panic with a K tour and he, he saw me and he recognized me from like on stage and he was like, and he winked at me and stuff. Mm-hmm. But like I never actually had a conversation with him again after the summer of 2005, but I wasn't gonna I was gonna tell him that anyway. I ended up quitting because I it was one of the only jobs I ever walked out on. It was just such a horrible scene, like, and it wasn't like a fast food thing where it's like so disgusting to work there. It actually wasn't that disgusting. It was just like I I had a morning shift and I came in, and it was just me and this one other like really awful old. Lady, I don't Aww. want to body shame her, but I was about to do that too. But she was just like oh, an no. awful old lady. And she was just like so temperamental and so pissed off. She was a real New England townie type. Like she was just like so, so pissed off about everything. It's I have like, a picture painted in my mind. <laughs> you could, I'm sure you do. And like she comes in and like I've only been working there a couple weeks and there's only so much I can do. I would do as much as I can if I know specifically what to do. But she's like not giving me any direction. And I guess she's like kind of a manager because of seniority but she's not really a manager manager if someone pulls up to the drive through first thing and we're open we're supposed to be open we open at 10 or whatever it's 10 05 someone pulls up and they're like hello hello and i can't be on the register because i'm not trusted to be mm-hmm. on the register yet but this lady who's like giving the keys to the door she's like she's like ignoring them and i'm like there's people over here and i have a good work ethic i'm like there's people are ready to serve them let's go we're the only right, two right. people in the restaurant for the first hour oh my gosh and she won't get on the and she finally gets in the headset and she goes what do you want oh jeez, <sighs> wow and, and then they basically like they just immediately curse her out right, right? and they drive away and i'm like what was that <laughs> and i'm still like soft genteel like good work <laughs> ethic danny and she's like ah wow, wow and then i just i'm just like i okay See ya. And I just walked out. I'm like, I can't do this. this you know what I mean? It was, I was like, it was just like, cause what could I do? Like she was in the position of authority, but she had, she couldn't care less about the customers. And like, I was not going to, in a position to change her, change her mind. And I, it was a good work ethic, but they wouldn't let me like do anything except like make nuggets or whatever, do dishes. Like, well, it all worked out because a month or so later, you went away to college, and that's part of the reason I quit was because, because I was like, like this money, this job is just making me money to do stuff for the summer. I already have a little bit of savings for college. I'll just dip into that if I don't find another job. So that's part of the reason I quit because I was getting ready to go to college. And then what happened in college? Uh, by late <laughs> fall of '05, early uh, winter of '06, right? You met me. That's right. And I was like, "Yeah, I know your favorite Barry Lion K." <laughs> it's true. So, this week, the trend. <laughs> so I wanted to pick this song this week because I was like, "Let's do a hit." Because last week we did like kind of, we didn't know that what have you been doing lately is sort of a is, is apparently like a less popular song, yeah. right? Yeah. There's only one cover I found. Right. Well, this week, the trend, I was actually shocked that I didn't have that many covers or stuff. And we'll get to that. Yeah, I was going to say, I didn't necessarily know. But you didn't know think it was that, a hit. Yeah, that was I a said thing. on the social media, I'm like, hey, guys, next week is a hit. And, and then I, Jessica I, actually said to me in real life, she's like, she saw the tweet. She's like, I don't think this week the trend's a hit. I'm like, no, 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 no. <laughs> it's a big hit. And then I did my research and I'm like, there are a ton of things on YouTube, but there's only a couple covers. But it is a very popular song. Like, I feel like it's got to be in the top 20 of people's favorites. Like, oh, that's another thing. Is I really, oh, I didn't finish what I was saying about the official Twitter. After Hoops or whoever runs that account said, here's the top 12 songs so far. I replied and I said, I've been, I've been using eight Twitter. <laughs> I used eight Google accounts to vote for kids on the street and it did nothing. And that 
reply to Reliant K got the most social media reaction we've had so far. That's amazing. Yeah, it got like 40, 50 likes, like really quickly. Like it might be up there a little bit more now, but that was hilarious. And it wasn't even like a tweet tweet or, or, a, or a retweet. It was like a reply. And I think I had the most likes of anyone who replied to that tweet from Reliant K. Nice. Yeah. So what else was I saying? This week the trend is to talk all over the place and go back and forth and step back to previous sections of the podcast. Did you have more to say about the song? Uh, well, I was just gonna I was just gonna talk about my Google deep dive from oh, this okay. week, which is just sort of a random thing I've started doing every week. Well, I have more to say more to say about the song. Oh, okay. Well, then you go for it. So, whenever I heard this song from when the CD was new, I was like, this isn't really a typical verse chorus verse structure it doesn't feel like it but then i looked at the genius.com entry for it and they were like and they were like you know verse one chorus verse two verse three chorus bridge i was like okay i guess there is a typical song structure here Mm -hmm. it's not like i thought this was paranoid android or something but i just thought that it was just basically like one big chorus that's why i thought the whole song was because it kicks right off with this week the trend like right off the top he starts with the title right. line right so i'm like so then where's the chorus and apparently genius says the chorus is so i say get me a solution watch me run with it that part is the chorus oh okay and all of the this week everything that starts with this week the trend is, a, is a repeating verse? verse okay and then obviously we know where the bridge is because that's basically the end Yeah, so I just, whenever I used to hear this song, something about the way it kind of just rolls, like Mm -hmm. the song kind of has a rolling sense to it, I just could never tell where the chorus and the verse began, and I thought it was just basically one long verse and then a bridge at the end, but I guess I was mistaken. I also like, uh, music-wise, the piano and the chime. Have you ever noticed the chime? Have you really paid attention to the piano, first of all? No. Because it's like, you think of this as like a pop punk song. Yeah, this and a is rock like, song. this is such a jam. Like, uh, this is a song I put on to jam out to and like scissor kick all over the house. <laughs> but that piano basically carries the song and gives it a lighter tone. I would almost like to hear this song with that piano taken out. Here, let me play the song for you real quick. So you can hear the piano. We were listening to it all day, but I didn't point this out to you before. This is Life After Death and Taxes. Hold on, here we go. And this week the trend was to not wake up till 3 p.m. I picked a few conscious hours that I chose to spend I slept away the rest of them. Oh yeah, I hear what you mean. You think of this as like a crunchy rockin' song, yeah. right? But he's got that, and it's so, it's it's there. It's very melodic. But it's, yeah, it's very melodic, and it kind of carries the song and gives it a lighter tone, and I'd like to hear a mix of this song with that piano taken out, because I wonder if it's almost like a heavier, slightly darker mm-hmm. tone. Do we get to that in the covers, or no? I don't think so. Mm-hmm. Actually, we'll find out, because I wasn't paying attention to that when I was listening to the covers. But also, did you hear the chime right before yes. the vocals start? Yeah. Ding. And then the piano starts. Yeah. That's very That's clever cool. and cool. Yeah. That's awesome. I've never really paid attention to that before. Yeah. I think that that piano really carries the whole song. I think if you remove that piano, then you'd notice it. Mm-hmm. It's almost like when the Ramones play rock and roll radio live. You listen to, almost, you listen <laughs> yeah. to any rock and roll radio and you're like, where are the horns? You know? <laughs> I think, and there's like uh, H2O, the band. They did a cover of um, what's this by the by the Mighty Mighty Boss Tones, who are one of my favorite bands. Someday, someday I suppose they do a cover of Someday I Suppose, but they do it without the horns. So it's like, but I'm like, it's something something's wrong. <laughs> See, when you get that perfect instrumentation, you got to kind of keep it. And obviously, Reliant K has a piano on stage, so when they play this live, they must be doing it. We'll listen, because I have two live videos. We'll double check. So just talking about lyrics for a second, I never realized it. But yeah, this is almost like a sequel, like a mini sequel to Wake Up Call. 
It is. Cause, a little bit. I said, especially because he wakes up at 3 p.m. Yeah. And then he's waking up at 3 at, at three p.m. and 3 a.m. and all different times. It's been like four or five years, bro. Yeah. you got to clean up your act by now. I know. I don't think he cleans up his act until Air for Free, though. Right. Because Forget and Not Slow Down is like, that's the wake up call, right? Yeah. Like the whole yeah. album is about him figuring out his life at that point. But he has these other songs like Wake Up Call and this song that are all about him trying to figure out his life and break out of the mold that he feels he's stuck in. And a lot of those songs, especially the Christian songs, are based off the idea that he's like sinning or slothful or something, right? Mm -hmm. But this one, although we're going to get into this as well with the lyrics, this isn't really clearly a Christian song again. This is just... No, this is... Just could, someone being introspective exactly. and trying to better themselves. There is some stuff going on with the lyrics where you could say, maybe it is maybe a Christian Maybe he's talking song. about God. So, yeah. that, so that's something I want to talk about with the lyrics, right? So this is a song where I know, like, before we decide to do this this week, I felt like I had a 60% good idea of what the lyrics were. But there were little sections that I never really paid attention to. And this is not a song that I, like, sat down and read the booklet while I listened to the mm-hmm. song. I was like, I got, I know what he's singing about. And if there's a verse or a chorus that I'm not quite sure what he's singing. He's singing about what the trend of the week is. I know, but I'm just saying, if there were some sections of the song that I couldn't quite get, don't shake your head at me. I understand that you're joking. This week, the trend is for me to barrel roll <laughs> over your uh, jokes. So I go to Google lyrics or whatever. Like I just type in this week, the trend on Google, on my phone, while I'm listening to the song. And I click the lyrics tab, and I see the lyrics. And people, whoever had submitted... Because most lyrics online are there because of user submissions. Like, very seldom, it seems, are lyrics online because the record label or the songwriters put them there. So whoever put the lyrics for This Week the Trend on whatever, you know, originally and and Mm -hmm. then those get copy-pasted to other lyric sites, they capitalized all the U's, all the pronouns, implying that when he says This Week the Trend is to um, gather all the strength that you could lend, Mm -hmm. they have the word you capitalized, Mm -hmm. which implies to me that he's trying to gather all the strength from God yes. that God can lend, right? They also capitalize, you gave me a solution, what have I done with it, right? Mm-hmm. Now, I went to our good old booklet, <laughs> our, our mm-hmm, Yepper's booklet, and I looked, and I'm like, okay, the line, you gave me a solution, what have I done with it, that you is capitalized, but because that's the beginning, if you look, each like stanza is capitalized. Right. And so that's the beginning of a stanza, so that's capitalized. However, to pause on this one, I do sort of think that the term, you gave me a solution, what have I done with it, probably is about God. Right. He's like, God gave me a solution. He, I've got my faith. I've got the Bible. Yeah. I've got Jesus in my heart. What have I done with it? I haven't done much. That's the, the exact same theme of Wake Up Call. Mm-hmm. It's like, am I sleeping when I'm praying? Am I not doing anything with my faith? And I'm just sleeping all day. But then when you get to the line, this week the trend was to borrow all the strength that you could lend, that you in the booklet is not capitalized. They Someone went and specifically capitalized it, at least on some of the lyric sites right, yeah. online, which implies to me that that's someone basically imposing their belief that that line is about god right doing the capitalized pronoun because it's about god and saying you're getting all the strength that you can lend from god Mm -hmm. i don't think that line's about god and i think that whoever uploaded those lyrics are being are being partial to basically make everyone who goes looking for these lyrics online think that line is about god i don't think it is i think he's basically because if because i guess you could go to god and be like God, give me all the strength you can lend. But I would think that God can give you all the strength because he can lend all the strength because he's got infinite strength, right? So it seems to me like you'd be saying that to a person, like you're looking for all the strength someone can lend. Yeah, I always thought that it was about God, but you, it's open to interpretation. (laughs) I guess it is open to interpretation. I'm the one who went through and capitalized all of them, Danny. Oh, I found you. I was just trying to look up right now because I could have sworn that when I was researching this, 
goatee had a fi- like lyrics on their official site oh. and i was trying to find that again and i can't find it now mm-hmm. while we're sitting here and this will just start up in the background i'm like what's on the advanced cd section of the mm-hmm cd is there anything oh. does it say advanced cd on the back it doesn't there might not be anything advanced on the mm-hmm yepper cd but I'm still going to pop it in and just check it out. Maybe there's a lyric sheet in there. Maybe it'll take you to ReliantK.com. It'll <laughs> take me to ReliantK.com for version of the website that is no longer there. Ooh, what an enhanced CD. <laughs> Ooh, listen to that computer whir. Yeah. Oh, and my computer was about to restart in like two minutes. It's a good thing I did that. My update was about to restart. So anyway, those are my feelings on this week, The Trend. Well, while your ancient computer possibly blows up, would you like to hear about some of the search results that come from looking for This Week the Trend by Reliant K? I would like to know that, but first let me tell you uh-huh. that the enhanced CD on mm mm-hmm uh-huh. is again, here's ReliantK.com. Yep. <laughs> but also this time, they're like, Here's mhm.com. Oh. Which is no longer active in the oh. Goatee Records Relying K umbrella. It's just some website. So, so that's it's it some for... website. Does it say like go to spectrum.com <laughs> no. slash whatever activate? No, it's like or... some other weird website. Oh, okay. Go to mhm.com and check it out. I'm not, I'm not vouching for it. It's not, it's not porn. That's all I can say. Well, I did not come across that when I was searching for things. <laughs> and you know what? I feel like if MySpace were still around in its original form, that maybe there would be a lot of great This Week the Trend blogs. Yeah. Unfortunately, it's now like, I don't know, it's like a like a pop culture news site or something. I actually went to it today just to be like, hey, what does this look like now? And it's weird. Yeah. Hey, you can go to Nine Space. You know, what? talk. You can go to Nine Space. Didn't you hear how Blink One Eight Two recreated classic MySpace specifically for their new album? You look so fascinated by this, Jess. Yes, you seem to have questions. Go ahead, ask all your fascinated questions. That Blink One Eight Two recreated the look of a classic MySpace. Can we go one episode without talking about Blink One Eight Two? No, but I gotta find that. I gotta find that Weezer mention. It's gotta be natural. This doesn't count. Um, hey, you look like Mary Tyler Moore. There it is. <laughs> I found an old text only posting for a Reliant K car sale, like online. Right. So that was fun. And then on September 12th, 2016, the band asked on their official Facebook page what songs they should play. At, I guess, whatever show they were doing that night. Mm -hmm. And there is a gross amount of deathbed comments. And there were 837 comments total. So I did not read them all. But at least one of them was this week, the trend, because that's why it linked me there. Very nice. (laughs) Uh, There's also a Reliant K Reddit post called This Week, the Trend. But it seems to just be rating albums as either an S a b c or oh, d oh yeah have you heard of that no um i was not familiar with this is this like a meme yeah it's sort of a meme thing yeah they're called tier lists and it's like that's exactly what you do you know it's not just albums but people are like tier listing everything where it's like s to f but you can also okay. choose what le- what letters you want but s is like premium right right and it's like when you're in elementary school and you don't get like A, B, C, D yet. You get S for satisfactory and E for no, excellent. This is and... more, I think this is actually like a Japanese, I could be wrong, but this has always been my assumption that it's like a Japanese rating. Because when you play video games, you know, like you play a stage and you get a rating on the stage you just played. Yeah. And typically you get A to F. But then if you do really good, you get S. Oh, I don't know. I usually play games where it's like gold, silver, bronze, sometimes platinum. Well, if you play like Sonic the Hedgehog games or (laughs) even Mario games or stuff or things like that or sports games. And I just kind of assumed it's a Japanese thing to take the basic and I could be totally wrong on that, but to take the basic A to F scale, but also call 
A++, call that S. Oh, okay. That's what it means. So you're rated on a scale of A to F, but S means like exempt, super, exemplary. Gotcha. Over A is S. So people take the tier list and there's like tier maker websites and stuff. I started one for MXPX that I was going to post as an MXPX meme. But then I like literally like didn't want to rate. And also MXPX memes has the attention of the band MXPX. So right. I'm like, I don't need them to know what albums I think I don't, you know, I don't like. Right. They get enough of that. At this point, as far as we know, this podcast has no attention of Relying K. So we can say which albums suck and which <laughs> albums are great. Well, oh no, John. Well, John Schneck, I don't, John Schneck's not listening, but he has liked our tweets. And yeah, he's stuff. super cool. So this person on Reddit, I don't do Reddit, so I'm not really sure where I find the username, but this person ranked S air for free. So that means he rates that yep. the highest. A for getting not slow down and mm hmm. Mm hmm. B anatomy of tongue in cheek. The Christmas album, Bird and the B sides. Well, you, gotta, you gotta put B, you gotta put B sides bird in B. <laughs> in B makes yeah. sense. Uh, C, apathetic EP, five score, mm-hmm. K is for karaoke, collapsible lung, and two laughs, mm-hmm. and D, the self titled. Mm-hmm. Do you agree with this? Mm-hmm. No, but I understand it. Who would put two lefts that low? Who would give two lefts a C rating? Yeah, I do think it's like one of their best albums. Yeah. Would you rate Anatomy over two <laughs> lefts? Um, well, again, because I discovered Relying K when the first album was the only one, like I built that rapport with each album, right? So I loved Anatomy and like I was there hearing the songs the band was constantly coming through Boston hearing the song. So yeah, like it's tough for me. So they all get an S in your book. In my book, honestly, like every album. Except Collapsible Lung, which gets an A. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, like every album is basically, t- here's here's my thing. And you know what? We talked about them in the past. The only other Reliant K fan podcast, Reliable J. <laughs> I purposefully didn't have you listen to their top albums episode with me they only did two episodes but i was like jessica would not agree with these lists um but for me i would put i'll actually like put a real list together but just like first draft of my list like almost everything goes up near a and s Mm -hmm. except for the first album and collapse of along and the christmas album yeah because i just don't like i don't rock on christmas music like christmas music it doesn't matter who's playing it Christmas music for me is like jazz is for most people. Oh, it's both those background. statements are just I just know. knives in my heart. Dan. I'm sorry. Oh. The, the only Christmas song I could listen to oh. any time of the year is Christmas Day by MXPX. Ah, oh. because that's just a rockin' song. I'm sorry. I think the reason why, and I don't know if that's true for this uh, poster. But I think the reason why a lot of people would rate the Christmas album so high is I think a lot of people came to Reliant K through the Christmas album because most of the year, if you go on (laughs) Apple Music or Spotify, their top songs are the We've been talking about it for the last several years. Yeah, their top songs are the Christmas songs. And then you have to wait. And finally, by like summer, like late (laughs) summer, those get all kicked out of the way to have the rest of the Reliant K songs on there. And then... Come November, it's all Christmas again and be my escape. Right. Man, Bird and the B-Sides is so high. It's got to be an A at least. Yeah. For me. Two lefts, three lefts, two lefts is for me an S, an S album. Oh, yeah. An, 100%. And Anatomy is an A. Forget Not Slow Down is an A or an S. I'd probably give Anatomy like a B. Maybe a C. I didn't have... It's weird. That was the first album I ever heard. But I don't have a super strong connection with, like, all of the songs like I do on Two Laughs. Right. Like, I have a really strong connection with that. And at the time, I had a really strong connection with all the mm mm-hmm songs. But as I've gotten older, those songs have kind of fallen back a little bit. April's snoring. I know. (laughs) She just looked up at me like, I'm sleeping. What's your problem? (laughs) Did you find any other fun stuff? 
I did. Let's see. Oh my gosh. Okay, so I found an article in The Observer, which is a student-run newspaper serving Notre Dame, St. Mary's, and Holy Cross. From February 10th, 2005, Rick and, written by Rick Becca and Morty. <laughs> written by Becca Saunders, titled Reliant K Lacks Maturity to Achieve Greatness. Uh-oh. And I was thinking about boogers or whatever. <laughs> Listen, Judgy McJudgerson. <laughs> This is pre-collapsible lungs, so keep your comments in your pocket. Breakfast at Timpanies is stupid. I don't even get it. That's what she said. It's not, that's what she said. Uh, now, she does refer to this as, to, mm-hmm, as a solid punk rock album. Uh, she says, mm-hmm, is composed of pure, of, excuse me, mm-hmm, is composed of a pure punk rock with some twists throughout the album. This lady, a pure punk rock with some twists throughout the album. This lady doesn't know pure punk rock. <laughs> the term punk rock is used a lot in this article. Oh boy, this is like her only exposure to it. Yeah. I can, because, because, oh my gosh, I'm just imagining this is like a nun or something. Because especially because <laughs> it's like the Holy Cross. I think it's a, I think it's a student because it says it's a student run. Oh, okay. Online newspaper. The name you described sounded like a Catholic Thing. Well, it is. It's Notre Dame. Yeah, Notre Dame. Right? St. Mary's and Holy Cross. Now, I don't know if that's Notre Dame, the college, and if St. Mary's and Holy Cross are also colleges, or if they or are if high schools, like Notre prep Dame schools. That... Because there is, here in LA, there's yeah. a Notre Dame prep right. school. I think it's like boys only, too. Ugh. I could be wrong. But yeah, um, she sums up the article by saying, mm-hmm is a solid album, but maturing needs to be done to really make Reliant K a band. This was their most that... mature album at this point. What is this? It was. What is this dink talking about? <laughs> um, so, uh, but some maturing needs to be done to really make Reliant K a band that can produce a truly terrific album. I bet when she heard Forget and Not Slow Down, she's like, pretty good, but you could still mature a little bit more. <laughs> This is like their most mature album. It really, it really is. I mean, to this of, point. Its, of its time, yeah, hundred percent. Like it shows maturing. Yeah. So how about you read that entire article for me? I'm just kidding. I don't <laughs> want to. I'm good. <laughs> we did that with that one with the guy a few weeks back, or maybe it was like a couple months ago now, where he was like. Reliant K is terrible because they're from Ohio. Right. Like that guy. They will never truly be pop punk because they are not from SoCal. Right. That guy. I was hoping you would mention Blink-182 and then I'd be like, aha, who's mentioning him now? Because he also compared them to that band. I specifically did not mention Blink-182. <laughs> you, it was in your mind, but you were like... I mentally edited it. So did you look up song meanings? Oh, I did, but they're all just exactly what you would expect. So, did my... you find some good ones? Because here's the thing: there's a couple different song meaning websites. I usually go to songmeanings.com. Right, because songmeanings.com has died out in the last several yeah. years, but they're great for Reliant K because Reliant K was, you know, especially up to like whatever up, up to. Uh, I think it's mm-hmm, we're forgetting not slow down, and that's kind of where they throw they fall off a little bit. Five score, or five score. Yeah, you're there's right. There's still a bunch of stuff on there. There's like there was like one I think for forget not slow down, and that was it. What was um? It was a forget not slow down song. We were talking about genius. That's right. It was uh. Where does he break down on the corner of 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 Jefferson and? I don't know. I thought it was Ethan Walnut. Where does he break down in the corner of Ethan Walnut? <laughs> That's such a dark reference. Uh, I'll figure it out. I'll just type in Breakdown Reliant K. That's not the song I meant. <laughs> Hold on. It was bumming. Oh, yeah. There we go. <laughs> I'll leave some of that in. <laughs> you you said Forget and Not Slow Down. So now I'm racking my brain yeah. through like all of Forget and Not Slow Down. And I'm like, I don't know. Yeah. And all you out there yelling at your phone or whatever, like, it's 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 all easy when you're all relaxed and you can remember all your favorite Reliant K songs. <laughs> but when it's me and I just have to pretend I like each song each week, I'm just kidding. So, yeah, it was bumming, was, like, had a ton of genius stuff. Like, that's where everyone goes nowadays is genius. But that was the whole reason I brought that up. The point, so the point is, 
Here's my favorite songmeanings.com song meaning for the song, which contains meaning, called This Week the Trend. Oh boy, I cannot read this name, but Punk Fizzy Slippers, except they don't put Sick. any... They don't put any... Uh, Slippers? No. What, what do you call it in the alphabet? A-E-I-O-U? Uh, vowels. Vowels. They don't put any vowels in... Oh, it could be Pink Fizzy Fuzzy Slippers. It could be Pink Fizzy Slippers. They said... In July of 2005, I'm a little, I'm a little over the edge tonight. Basically, it's talking about how people, especially teens, have trends that everyone has to do unless they're made fun of for it. I can say this because I am a teen and I live in that world. And that's really good for me to hear because when I read this at first, listening to them talk about what teens do back then in 2005, I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. This is problematic. But then they said, but then they said, I'm a teen. I was like, oh, they're a teen. They're allowed to say this. They live in that world. But if like someone who's not a teen is talking about other teens and what they do and what their stereotypes are, that would be a problem. I did see this comment. <laughs> because there's quite a few that have that same general idea. It's a lot of, this is about what's trendy. This no, is but about it's not. what this week the trend is. That's the one thing that I don't think. that, that, that It's not about what's trendy. Right. He's saying this week. It's, he, it, it's, it's, he, it's, it's, it's introspective. It's more like this week the trend for me was yeah. to do this stuff, was to not wake up until 3 p.m. and to... Because he's not saying any conscious hours yeah. that I chose to spend and then sleep away the rest of them. This uh, to say that this song is about trendiness is to say it's about peer pressure, and this song is not about peer pressure at all. No, it's he, he like hurts his peers. He does, and he leaves them a yeah. voicemail hoping things work out in the end. But there's no connection to the idea of trendiness or what's happening or peer pressure or anything like that. Yeah, he could call this song. He could have called this song this week the thing. This week, the thing that I did is I pissed off all my friends, and I slept till 3 a.m., and everyone got mad. Yeah, actually, as a teen, this song was not as relatable to me. Right. Because I was like an uber goody two-shoes back then, yeah. and was like up at, you know, 8 a.m. or whatever, 7 a.m. every day, and doing my homework and being nice to the people in my life, so. Yeah. Yeah. You were a nice girl. You were a real nice girl. I appreciate you for that. During my fresh, uh, Red Peach 91 says, During my freshman year of high school, we had to analyze a song or poem and write this paper on it. I decided to analyze this song, and to this day, it is still one of my favorite songs. I don't remember exactly what I said about the meaning of it, but it really does pack a punch in the end. Thank you, Red Peach 91. I wanted to know what the paper was. Yeah, is it on Google Scholar or something? Like, yeah. We got to see that paper. I did do some Google Scholar searching about Reliant K. Oh, wow. And there's not... I didn't... I didn't find a ton of great stuff, but I did find this one paper that I was interested in at first, where it's basically all about the history of crossover hits. Oh, cool. And I don't think they were just talking about relationships. They meant, no, they weren't just talking about like Christian. Christian to they were also mainstream. talking about like country to mainstream. Oh, okay. And I don't know if they talked about hip hop to mainstream, but it looked like an interesting article and I want to go back and yeah, that's cool. read it. It yeah. also wasn't structured like a paper exactly. I don't know academic paper world, but it was like... Right. Was, I bet that there's a big section it on... It was like breakouts. It was like little little paragraphs with headers on each one. Oh, okay. Yeah. I bet there's a lot on... um, Or at least in the same category as Reliant K, it's probably a lot on Switchfoot. Mm. Who are they? They're that band who did the soundtrack for A Walk to Remember. They had like three songs on that soundtrack. A Walk to Remember... Yeah, you know, with Paz de la Huerta. That's right, that Paz de la Huerta movie. <laughs> of course. <laughs> oh, man, 15-year-old Jessica loved to watch to remember. That was her favorite movie. And then, like, 30-year-old Jessica tried to go watch that movie with Danny. Here's what happened about time. Walk to Remember. Oh. When we were still only dating for about a year, less than two years, 
Jessica makes me a list of her favorite movies, and they're like, these are, the, and we both love movies because we both come from a background in film. We met in film school. She's like, here's a list of my favorite movies, and over, you know, we'll, over the time, we'll watch these all together. And we did watch most of them. But I'm trying to remember which movie really, I think, like, there was a couple movies on there where I was just making fun of them the whole time. Yep. And you were like, yep. You were like, we don't have to finish this list. And I was no. like, oh, no, no, yeah. no, no. <laughs> it was like, because any of the, like, like my all-time favorites, I think you had probably already seen, like, Taxi Driver and right. True Romance and Donnie Darko and those movies you had already seen. But it was the it was the Walk to Remembers and the Fever Pitches and the rom-coms <laughs> that you were not quite so familiar with. Right. Um, so a Walk to Remember we hadn't gotten to during the heyday of that list. <laughs> So finally, after we moved to Los Angeles, one day we're like on the couch and A Walk to Remember is on Netflix or Hulu or something. And I'm like, we should finally watch A Walk to Remember together. Like it was on your list so long ago. And she's like, all right, but you have. And I was like, I promise I won't say a word. I won't make fun of it at all. And Jessica's the one who's watching and she's like, oh my gosh, I was such a good boy. I was enjoying the Switchfoot music. I'm like, this is all very interesting, whatever. I'm not saying my jokes. The only time I started joking is when they go on their date, finally, towards the middle of the movie, sort of middle endish of the movie. And he's he's dressed like Tony Soprano. And I'm like, what is this dorky outfit? Whoever, he's like dressed in a really, you know, it, uh, uh, the shirt itself is sharp. But it's like but it's like opened with like a white shirt underneath. Oh come on, he looks like he should be in a ska band. <laughs> he looked like he should be in swingers. He like <laughs> he looked like he should be in the big bad voodoo daddy. <laughs> he looked so stupid. And then, spoiler warnings, ladies and gentlemen, earmuffs if you don't want to know the end of Walk to Remember. But I'm like, cause you know she is like cancer or something and she's gonna die before she is in her 20s so they get married and i'm like they can get married it was on her list they go more into it in the book even the twilight movies waited four movies for them to get (laughs) married in high school listen she had a list of her dreams and things she wanted to accomplish before she died and one of them was get married in the church that her parents were married in. So Landon married her in the church that her parents were married in. And it was beautiful, damn it. Mandy Moore's back with new music, by the way. I'm so excited. Did that song come out? You want to listen to that real quick? I sure do. Let's listen to a quick second I heard second it was happening, but I didn't Mandy know if it Moore's happened yet. Mandy song. What is it called? Is it called Candy? Official music video? Does she have more than panties in her pocket this time? What? Okay, here we go. Oh, is it her cover of a Switchfoot song? No. Oh, yeah. Uh, no, this is called When I Wasn't Watching. Here's the new Mandy Moore on our Reliant K podcast. <laughs> there's, an, there's a banner ad for This Is Us on it. Of course there is. <laughs> Targeted marketing. Maybe sleeping in. I like the instrumental part. It sounds like I'm watching a news channel in the 1980s. <laughs> Today in sports. We gotta hear the chorus. Oh, she's in her bra and panties. This is a little too risque for our Reliant K podcast. Oh, what am I talking about? They have songs about one night stands now. It's fine. Mandy Moore is like, eat it, Ryan Adams, you problematic crazy man. Speaking of problematic crazy men, (laughs) we can start. I forgot to mention about um, this week, the trend, Andrew from Magnified Pod. (laughs) Speaking of problematic crazy men, Andrew from Magnified Pod, he let me know that this song reminds him of a brand new song. The Mandy Moore one? It is brand new. No. That this week the trend reminds him 
of the um, brand new song. We are so going to get flagged for that Mandy Moore content. Oh, we'll keep it like, (laughs) we'll put a really horrible filter on it. (laughs) So like no one can even hear it. So Andrew said that he thought that this song to him feels like Reliant K's attempt at making a song in the style of the band Brand New, who I know you don't know. There's one song you might know if you heard it. But specifically, he felt that this song is similar to Sudden Death in Carolina. Now, Jessica does not know anything about Brand New, and I don't know what people out there do or don't know. I know what Sudden Death is. Just the concept of Sudden Sudden Death. Sudden Death Overtime. So... We, that is not a great movie, by the way. I would play the song Sudden Death in Carolina for you. you know, you're talking about hockey. Jessica loves hockey. <laughs> but what you shouldn't love is the band Brand New, because in the last couple of years, the lead singer of that band was kind of outed for possibly having uh, underage sex. Oh. So he's like he's on a lot of canceled lists, and pretty much he's on my canceled. Because here's the thing. Brand New was like the up-and-coming, like this is the future of punk kind of band at mm. one point. Right, mm-hmm. there's one song you. If I played for it for you, you'd probably recognize it. Sick Gloria Transit or something like that. So I would play a clip of Sudden Death in Carolina and see if you <laughs> think it sounds like this week the trend. But maybe we don't play the music from the guy who uh, did that thing. Sounds like a plan. Yeah, but if you want to just go out there and you know check out the song for a second, and if you want to go out there and listen to the song for a second, compare them. You can write in and let us know if you think the songs actually sound the same. Because that's what problematic bad man Andrew from Magnified Pod says. Andrew's a very nice person. I'm just joking around. Um, he's, I'm still getting a DM right now. As this is go- <laughs> if we don't edit this out, I'm getting a DM right now. He's like, what the fuck, guys? If you want, we can start getting into stuff that I found. Let's do it. So here is a live version from Kentucky. The Kentucky Ballroom in 2014, the year of our Lord, the day before Halloween 2014. Now, this version doesn't have the piano. They don't even have a piano on the stage. Oh, during I guess go. during the Mm-hmm tour, there was no piano on stage. Because this is the Mm-hmm 10th mm. anniversary tour, right? Oh, the 10th anniversary yeah. tour. Yeah. Okay. And there was no piano in Kentucky that night. Because I was so... going to say, I definitely saw them during the Mm-hmm yeah. tour, and they had a piano on stage. Right. But I we did not, we missed the 10th anniversary tour, which I'm still super bummed about. Right. No, they definitely had a piano on tour during the original Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because... At the concert that you were at, the Hard Rock Live in Orlando, yep. there's that amazing shot where he's on yeah. piano and the camera cuts away and it cuts back. He's not on the piano anymore because he's magic. Tyson just teleports. So let's listen to another second of this. I'll skip ahead a little bit. Yeah, it's Tyson with his more melodic singing voice. Yeah. There. I don't know if I have, actually, I only have two clips from the mm -hmm, 10th anniversary tour. So let's hear Boston, which I know this full set's available, but here's someone at the front row. That's Maintain Consciousness. Let's skip ahead a little bit. I was jamming along to that. I was like, yeah, let's do it. We'll talk about Maintain Consciousness someday. Somebody wanted us to do one of those songs. We've been getting a lot of requests, on. and it, I don't know if it's the same person, but we've had one request on Twitter and one by email for us to do Where Do We Bury the Hatchet? Do we bury it inside that our heads, or do we bury it somewhere else? I think that's the name of the song. Yes. So uh, we will do that song at some point, but we just, we're doing mm-hmm right now, so we got to like wait at least three weeks. And we're going to do a Halloween episode that's where right. we do Creepier EP. That's right. 
I didn't talk about this, but when you hear this, you have two days to send us your cover of the song God. Yes. Because there are no covers <laughs> of the song God from Air for Free. You have two days. You have two days. <laughs> if you're hearing this the day it comes out, you have two days. But <laughs> We may take some later submissions and yeah, put them in later. There's no covers of the song God from Air for yeah. Free, which I was really surprised of. I thought I'd at least find some like churches doing it because it seems like a pretty easy praise and worship song to cover. Yeah. But, so if you can at least get it into us by by Sunday, September 29th, that'd be great. Right. I said September 26th to the people on s- social media. Oh, that's good. Well, I mean, because that's, prob- that's probably when we're going to record. We usually record on Fridays before the Wednesday that we release. But in the last couple of weeks have not been working out that yeah. way. Uh, so... But you're, so that's your, your main deadline is the 26th and your late deadline is the 29th. Because this week the trend is for you to send us your covers of God. <laughs> oh, Andrew was also supposed to send us a parody version of this week the trend. I want to hear that. I'm really excited. You told me about that and I so am wanting to hear it. So I wrote some parody lyrics myself. Okay. They go like this. <laughs> this week the trend was to binge watch every episode of Friends. <laughs> But to skip before the last five minutes and of the end <laughs> of the end and hope that the whole show makes sense in the end. I rhymed end with end. <laughs> I hate when you rhyme the same words. That's why I'm not a professional musician. Okay, here's this is the same tour. I'm not going to play this other live clip. Um, yeah, I wish I, I wish I could have found a earlier. There must be one out there. Maybe it's in a big bundle of a of a full set or something. But I didn't find an earlier 2004 version of the song live. Um, but we were talking about the lyrics earlier. And maybe this would have been a big help. Because we don't really talk about lyric videos. Because they're all visual. Right. But if you wanted to see... If you really want to get a sense of what this song is about... Mm-hmm. I suggest you listen to Little Love Song on youtube that their song is the word little love song but with a zero instead of an o in the word love because they put together a little lyric video for us where the font is dunkin donuts font oh my gosh it is that's awesome it's the dunkin donuts font okay listen the lyrics are not just this week the trend 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 because that is... That's all that's playing that's on all the that screen it's, right It's now. an orange background with the Dunkin' Donuts font that just says this week the trend over and over and over again. Here we go. There we go. <laughs> it's the Dunkin' Donuts font. It's so appealing. <laughs> hey, <laughs> the only band that should be singing songs about Dunkin' Donuts is They Might Be Giants. I always had trouble discerning the give me a solution part. Oh, um. It was always like one of those kind of misunderstood lyrics for me. Oh, uh, what do you think he said? I don't remember. If you saw it in Dunkin' Donuts, I wrote a paper about remember. it, but I don't remember anymore. <laughs> that was you as well. You were pink fuzzy sneakers. No, yep. that was someone else. So Jessica always looks forward to what are the what are the ship videos? What are the fandom videos? I love it. No fandom videos <sighs> this week. I'm so sorry. There weren't any last week either. I know. And I, last week I said that there were. But really, I was thinking of that creepy, creepy Disney Nickelodeon teen star video. Oh, yeah. Where it's like, then he shows up with like, it's just clips of Disney and Nickelodeon stars. And you're like, oh, this is fun. And all of a sudden, it's any picture they found in like, like, a, right. the horrible Chan sites or whatever. Right. So if music isn't really your forte, if you're not very terribly musically inclined, like Danny and I, mm-hmm. and maybe video editing is more your thing... Make me some ship videos for (laughs) these upcoming songs. You know, Shadow the Hedgehog and Shrek or whatever, (laughs) whatever you think out there, characters should be together. The I'll 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 take any pairing. Well, this week the trend in fan videos is full shot music videos. Oh wow! People love to do fully shot edited music videos to this song. Um, we have a bunch and, you know, for the listeners and I don't, I haven't talked about this a lot, but for the most part, if we talk about something really visual, I'm going to post the funniest stuff. That's like the most visual on our social media. So make Mm -hmm. sure if you've only been listening to the podcast to be following us on Sadie Hawkins pod 
on Twitter and Instagram because I'll post stuff there. Yeah. And if you really, if there's a video that you really want to see, like DM me and I'll send it to you as well. I was talking about early on doing those YouTube playlists. Yeah. I can still do that. I can still go back because everything that we talk about, I put in a Google Doc and all I have to do is copy paste those in and start making those playlists and then people can see every song. But then I was also like, doing my research playlist, which might have things that I cut out because they're boring to talk about. And then I have to do another playlist, which is the things we actually talked about in the episode. And sometimes we have talked about things on the show and then cut them out because we didn't really say anything about it. So then I have another playlist, so there'd be videos in there that we didn't actually talk about. So I didn't know how to manage that. But I'll figure it out. (laughs) So this week the trend is... People love making full music videos and not just like in grandma's living room, but like actually editing stuff. And there's a bunch of these. So Jessica, help me describe these. Well, I'm, I'm distracted by the, the more videos like this and why pop punk sucks by Nate the mate. I, that comes up a lot and it's got 60,000 views. I think that's a, that's a, that's a person. He's constantly coming up. So this first video is, oh, he's got one subscriber. No, he's, no I'm not going to subscribe because <laughs> I don't want him to delete the video. Well, I, I really like this first one. This you is, can give likes. Subs are a little iffy, Dan. This is uh, Kent. Oh, well, he's got two. Th- he's got almost 3,000 views, but just one subscriber. Uh, Kent A. Wren. So it's Kent with a K, the letter A, R, W, E, N. And his first video, I really like this. The camera's a little shaky, but the first several seconds, like before the lyrics start, he just keeps showing his neighborhood. Mm-hmm. He's like just showing little yeah. shots of his neighborhood. I think it's really fun. Yeah, here's different It's houses. actually a little artistic if the camera wasn't so shaky. Now, the alarm clock yep. is going to be a theme in of every course. single one of these videos. Well, when you don't wake up till 3 p.m., how else are you going to show that, Dan? So he's getting dressed and he falls over. This one's edited. He does. There's a few editing mistakes, like dead frames and stuff, or black frames. <laughs> he's like, "Hey, that's funny." He was about to put gel in his hair, but he looked at his hair and he's like, "Hey, I already yeah, look pretty it looks good." Yeah, looks pretty cool. He runs. He gets in, gets in his car. So he's just like rushing off. Now, then he's oh, his car broke, and now he's just gonna run somewhere. Oh, and he's, he's, he gets, gets on a bike. He gets a guy's bike. Oh, I guess he knocked the guy out to take his Oh, bike. wow. There's just a <laughs> guy a face violent. down in the grass. Well, you yeah. see, he, like, apparently... We didn't hit... see anyone get knocked no. out. No. It's the implication of violence that sometimes <laughs> is more violent in and of itself. It's true. And then this is the part where... So the so far, this video is pretty good. The part that gets a little odd is then he's running around talking to people about some sort of form in his hand. He's, like, on a college campus showing everyone this form, and they're all shrugging. Huh. I don't know if he's trying to get something signed or he's trying to find out where his it's a petition to get deathbed taken off the fan (laughs) vinyl bring it on over man i'll sign i think it might be he was trying to find where his class was that one was a little shorter than the song but um who is that from that was from kent a wren good job kent a wren then here's another one how many of these do we have total one two three four Five, six, seven, eight, nine. Wow. We have nine fan music videos. Oh, wow. So here is another one. And I have a lot more notes. Maybe on this pick one. your like top three. Yeah, we'll see. So this one we can talk about really quickly. This one is kind of crazy because it's again. They all start with the people waking up and looking at the alarm clock, right? Only it's 6.30 now. It's 6.30 he's waking up. This one is peculiar in oh, that all oh, the sound like effects... like shirtless and in his underwear. All the sound effects are left underneath. All the ambient, oh, like yeah. dietetic music, diegetic, all the diegetic sound... Well, Dan, it, it's, He's those, left in the it's video. those extra audio tracks that you have to delete. <laughs> and if you don't know how to delete it without the video, what are you going to do, you know? 
Then what's peculiar about this one? It shows a, a door, yeah, yeah with all his favorite bands on it. Well, there's a shot where he walks into the door. He walks through the door and shuts it on the camera. And then I think it's supposed to be an instantaneous cut to the door opening again. And now he's dressed and walks back out. But instead, we hold on that door for like four <laughs> seconds. Like they didn't do the mm-hmm. cut correctly. Right. Then he goes downstairs and he makes breakfast. And he just sits there and makes breakfast and just eats his cereal. And then his mom, like, comes in. And I don't know if she's supposed to be there or a sister. I can't really tell. She's got her hair covered. Oh, he's, like, throwing stuff. he throws stuff. his cereal at her. Jeez. And she ruffles his hair. I don't think she was supposed to come through the shot. I'm th- I think she's like, I don't care about your stupid movie. I need my Metamucil or whatever. <laughs> and then they speed up. So, anyway, what's peculiar about this version, this this fan video... Is that at the end there's bloopers. Oh. For this, like, they don't even do the full song. So they really... All, all he does is just walk... He wakes up, walks out of the bedroom, yeah. throws some stuff at a woman in the kitchen, and that's it. And I, I was like, like, I was like, oh, they actually put real effort into this video, because unfortunately it doesn't really show in the final video. <laughs> This is by Matt Stoner. I'm sorry, Matt Stoner. Matt Stoner has 75 subscribers, though. So they're not aching. Um, oh, yeah. And this video ended <laughs> where he's just getting... Re- the whole video is him just getting ready for the day, eating breakfast, getting mad at his mom for walking through the video. And then he puts his backpack on. And he says, okay, mom, I'm off to school. And he opens up the door, and it's 10 p.m. outside. <laughs> it's like pitch black outside when he opens up the door. That's kind of funny. But he's going off to school. <laughs> This is what happens when you smoke too much weed, Matt Stoner. Forget the day. <laughs> That's why you sleep till 3 p.m. Exactly. Because you've been smoking all day. Now, this one is like they're really trying to make like a real rock video. Again, again, alarm clock, yep. number one theme. This one's actually really cute because it's these like all these teen boys <laughs> sleeping <laughs> at their instruments in their bedroom. I don't bedroom. think they're teenagers. I think they're like Well, he's a 12. No, yeah, they're younger than he's a teen. The lead si- the quote-unquote lead singer, he's they're like preteens. And this one kid is older. He's probably yeah. like 15 or something. He's probably a br- an older brother. And you see oh, that? Oh, that was cool. They're all in their pajamas. They wake up at 3 p.m. and they get up and they just got a rock. They're like waking rock. They're yeah. like they get up and they're and in they their pajamas. And they do like a little jump. They did a jump in the air and then there's a wavy cut. And yeah. then suddenly they're in their really cool 2005 <laughs> to write love on her arms punk shirts. But I also love that there is a keyboard player who is the youngest out of all these kids. And he doesn't actually have a keyboard oh, stand. Yeah. It's like on some sort of it's kitchen counter, counter in their bedroom. Yeah. Like some sort of bizarre middle America house design where this bedroom has like a kitchen Maybe counter. Maybe it's the in rec it. room. Oh, it could be like a rec room. Could be the bar in the rec room. So that is <laughs> Maldondo Madness. They had to push the pool table out of the way, Dan, in order to make this. Dad got so mad when he got home. I know. Um this one's real quick. This girl named Michelle Ho she does this video that actually I feel like you would have made because it looks like she made it all by herself, right? And she's in her parents' house and she's just sitting at their piano, their grand piano. She's It, it goes back and forth between her and her bedroom playing the bass. Right. And her at her parents' piano. And this scratchy film footage of stills, but it like Ooh, with she's a, sitting on top on of it. the piano. <laughs> Uh, it's, been like step, it's like Step Brothers when they <laughs> film the music video and they crash the dad's yeah, boat. It's yeah. like if she showed this to her parents, like, you're sat on the piano. <laughs> yeah. And then there's these fading effects because she has the Those sub, cool. she has the single still shot. So she's like in two places on the piano nice. at once. Nice, yeah. She didn't do a, like a mask. So it's all, it's all like she's invisible. She's a ghost. It's, it's pretty rad. It's cute. That's very teenage and that's adorable. Uh, this one doesn't have... Oh, I don't know. Oh, yeah. 
This one is like outsider art. This is Ooh. like so interesting. It's this little boy who, but he's just rocking out with a guitar, right? And this doesn't look like outsider art yet. He's just a single frame rocking out on his guitar, lip syncing to the song. Then he starts to superimpose this text on the screen. And see, he's got text oh, he's at the got, bottom. And he's got multiple shirts on, and he uh, or multiple layers of shirts, and he just took the And then first it says pajamas off. across the front. <laughs> This looks and like he took the second shirt off. This looks like oh, red represents burn. This basically what? <laughs> like he puts he puts these like plain Helvetica fonts on top of the video, and it basically looks like make it makes it look to me like something that could be playing at MoMA. You know what oh, I mean? Oh, it's like a traffic light because he had a green shirt on first, then he took that off, and he had a oh. yellow shirt underneath. And he took that off, and that's a red shirt. But here's the best moment. And now he's in a completely different shirt. <laughs> it just pauses and it says, I don't want my life to stop and stop is capitalized. It's so amazing. It's like a it's like a talking heads music video. <laughs> it is. He's saying he lip syncs the words, I just want to get n- mugged at knife point. And then it just still frames. He just stops singing. It just still frames. And then it says across the screen, I don't want my life to stop. It's like this beautiful, like, you know, don't, you know, this, this pro, not pro life. Cause that's about abortion. But what do you call it when you're anti suicide? Cause I'm like, that's also pro life, isn't it? I don't know. Do we not talk about abortion on this podcast? <laughs> what do you call it when you're anti-suicide? I don't know. I don't know what you call that. But it's just like this, like, you know, life is, uh, don't end your life message. It's very cool. It's getting hot in here. It's actually finally cooled off in Los Angeles for the first week in a long time. How many do, do we have left? Oh teen girls music video. I... Oh, there's one in here with a bunch of teen girls and the the audio was muted. Because old YouTube rules were like if you used a song, instead of like blocking it or taking your ad revenue, oh, right. they, they would just mute it. Mute it, yeah. I remember they did that. I really wanted to, years and years ago, I really wanted to watch the music video for Dance Hall Crashers Mr. Blue, which I'm not even a big Dance Hall Crashers fan, but I was like, I remember the video for Dance Hall for Mr. Blue. I'd really like to watch that. And I find it like on their official page, linked to YouTube. And it's been muted because, oh, weird. but I'm like, it's on their official page. Yeah. Although that still happens today because MXPX's own official YouTube page has had their own music videos blocked by Universal Music. It's ridiculous. It's so stupid. Um, here's a, <laughs> here's one. This is very interesting. Now, I don't know if this is a brother and sister or possibly a boyfriend and girlfriend, but they're like a teen boy and a teen girl in their home and just tons and tons of teddy bears throughout this whole video sweet dvd collection (laughs) (laughs) great crt flat tv those are those are getting people look for those now the late model crts Oh, so the They're boy, about to sta- yeah. the boy's holding up a knife, and the girl's holding up a teddy bear, and now they are They're stabbing. They're gonna backstab all their teddy the bears. Teddy bears, and now they're dancing with the teddy bears. Yeah, he's wearing. He's actually wearing a to write love on her arm shirt. Oh, I was joking about that earlier. <laughs> so they just dance these teddy bears around, and she's covered oh, in teddy an bears. Air hockey table oh, in their rec awesome. room. That's awesome. They're playing. Oh, she's covered in more teddy bears. Lots of lots of teddy bears. This, in this week the trend is teddy bears. This is one of the only videos without a freaking alarm clock in it. <laughs> <laughs> Just tons and tons of teddy bears. Um, and then more kids. Uh, this one I called "More Kids in the House and Backyard." <laughs> oh yeah. So this one. Is Every Reliant K video is just kids in the house and backyard. This one's very edited. Like they. Are these the same kids from the last one? No, these are more kids just running around in their backyard. And a cat. They said, let's make a music video. 
and put it in slow motion, but yeah. clearly post slow motion where yeah. it like degrades the uh, quality. Right, the frames aren't there to make it real slow yeah. motion. She's waking up. Pan she, over pan and over an alarm, alarm clock. clock. So this one gets strange. Oh, around. they crashed. They fell down outside in the backyard. Oh, geez. <laughs> the brother's coming at her with a knife. An actual like... kitchen knife. <laughs> yep. Oh, geez. Uh, during that part, they're just showing all of so their school So when they say, photos. I don't want to die, so sitting around wait, waiting for my life to fly by, <laughs> they show this girl, her parents have a picture for every year of her life on the wall. So they took the camera and they shot with the camera every single photo and then they cut them all. And it just got a little like inside family creepy there. Like yeah. that's perfectly reasonable for you to do as a family. Like you're very proud of your oldest daughter. But when you make a video and you line them all up together like that and you have every single year on the wall, and that gets of, a little creepy. They did not show any of the younger kids' pictures as far no. as I can tell. <laughs> they were like, we're not printing all those. First of all, we're out of wall space. <laughs> Second of all, this is the early 2000s and photo printing is not cheap. We can't just get it. We can't just do it on our printer. So, yeah, and there's two more, but I'm not going to play any more. Oh, there is a fandom video. <laughs> I totally forgot, Jessica. Good news. Nice. Do you love the show Psych from USA? Oh, nice. Looks like paper. Actually, our life savings. It's so it's clips from the show Psych. But this one's got a little extra flavor than a normal, like, fandom video. Because... <laughs> oh, they put the... Uh... We cut in their favorite clips. Yep. But, and... we, do, but we, don't put, we don't level down the song when those clips come in. So... No, so we instead put the, the what they're saying, like, subtitles across yeah, the screen. But, but across like, the middle of the screen. Time, yeah. And not quite as artful as that little boy who said he doesn't want his life to stop. <laughs> Um, it's super creepy when you say, like, little boy. I'm just throwing that out there. I'm oh, sorry. There's another Lakeisha Kruger song, which we won't play this week, but we talked about her. We've talked about her three times yep. now. She has Pond 5 stock music that she makes lyric videos to known songs, but then you listen to it, and it's not the song you want to listen to. Lakeisha's back. Um, then we have, I totally forgot about this, I discovered this girl who has this YouTube channel named Cecilia Bedelia. She, um, and she has a YouTube show called The Cecilia Report. And she loves Relying K because she's constantly using... This is not my desk and these are not my things, but today, as part of a very <laughs> special episode of the Cecilia Report, we're answering advice questions that you guys sent in. And everyone knows that if you're answering advice questions on YouTube, you have to have a desk because it makes your advice seem professional and legitimate. Our first question is, Cecilia, I'm in desperate need of your help. I'm a struggling artist and it just seems like no one will view my work. How do you get so many views and subscribers? I just want to be like you. What does this have to Next do question. with the trend Hi. for this week? It... I don't know, she played the song at the beginning, and she's going to give us advice on how to make our podcast more popular. Ted, how do you determine which one is best? Cat, dog, fish. Thank you. All right. Whoever sent in this question, why did this have to be anonymous? Anyway, the fact that you want this to be anonymous makes me think that maybe your mom and dad don't want- She picks cat, because she loves cats. She has cats. I watched five of her Spoiler videos. Spoiler warning. <laughs> <laughs> I watched- Five of her videos. I watched five C uh, Cecilia Bedelia videos. Oh, four. I watched four, and she uses this week the trend all the time. She uses uh, does it? She uses Sahara, I think, a couple oh. times, or maybe something else. I can't remember. But she loves Relying K. She loves cats. She loves Christmas. That's what I learned from the four videos. That's the Cecilia report on YouTube. So check that out. Um, and then. We can start getting into stuff that I found on SoundCloud. Are you ready? Oh, to wow. Start diving into covers because here's the first thing I found when I typed in This Week the Trend on SoundCloud. I forgot we hadn't even gotten to covers yet. 
This week, the trend is Florida wildlife showing up in unexpected places. First, in the <laughs> suburb of Tampa, a family woke up to an uninvited guest yesterday. That is literally swimming. every day the trend in Florida. <laughs> you always have alligators. Yeah. When we lived in Florida, there was a horrific looking turtle in the pond by our house. It was a monster. It was. It's like, Gamera is cute. <laughs> <laughs> this thing didn't when you think of a turtle i'm not don't think of cartoon turtles think of like real turtles you've seen on like i don't know zoo shows for kids they're always got cute little faces this thing was a monster it was horrifying it didn't look like any turtle you've ever seen it looked so disgusting it was a monster face it was like it was like horizontal it was That's like turtle-less. horrifying yeah so now we get into real covers. That was the week. That was the trend in the Florida Wildlife Report. But um, here we go. We're almost at the stretch. The, this week, we're almost getting to the end because we have an acoustic cover by Michael Dickinson. In 2010, he recorded this version. Now do you hear the piano? Just kidding. <laughs> I do. This week the trend was to not wake up till 3 p.m. I picked a few conscious hours that I chose to spend and slept away the rest of them. And this week the trend was to crash and burn and then return again to practice the life that I pretend provides enough to get me through the weekend. So I say, get me a solution and watch me run with it and you gain solution what have i done with it that was nice that was pretty that could yeah. almost go in an indie teen movie it could it's nice i like that yeah this is the moment of dramatic tension this is the moment of mm-hmm. they turn yeah like are they gonna are they gonna kiss or are they not gonna kiss is this the trend or are they gonna stab each other in the back is this the end of the second act or they get on their bicycle to go after that guy or girl yeah um then there is this channel called P1K, and they said, "Whoop! 1,000 people are now going to receive an email that I just put out a new song thanking them for subscribing. So in 2012, I guess when you could send emails to your YouTube followers? Interesting. <laughs> so I guess this YouTube channel was celebrating 1,000 subscribers. Since then, they have 9.4 thousand subscribers, so they're way past that since 2012 but when they had 1000 nice. subscribers um on lead guitar herg hergst ridge and on piano forest rain did this cover forest rain is a sweet name so they're almost making it sound like like uh the hives or something mm-hmm. Like the guitar tone's a little looser. It's mm-hmm. more guitar. It's more uh, garage rocky. Yeah. It really is. Like the guitar tone on the actual song is is really great. It sounds so good. Like this sounds good too, but this is like a it makes it sound like a slightly different song. This week the trend was to not wake up till 3 p.m. Pick the few conscious hours that I chose. To... I love his voice. It's, yeah. It's, the cadence. The cadence is really... Is... This sounds like somebody and something. Yeah. What is Let's it? I can't think this. of it. <laughs> oh, oh, it's kind of... It's got a, like a... Oh, it's not Morrissey. It's not... No, but it might be someone who's influenced by Morrissey. Maybe. What is it? What does it remind yeah. us of? Kind of sounds like the Killers. Kind of the vocals kind of sound like the Killers. Maybe. Yeah, it's like the high. It's like Hive's instrumentation and Killers' vocals. Maybe. 
Yeah. Let's listen to the to the Somebody bridge. will write in or call in and tell us. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Call 402-95-SADIE and let us know what you think PK1's voice sounds like. I skipped right past the vocals. Okay. So moving on to the last cover of the week. We're done. Woo. This is... And I think he's come up before, Kevin Mojica. This is on SoundCloud. Maybe. Um, I think this guy has come up, or at least I've seen him a bunch, because this guy has done dozens and dozens of MXPX covers. So when I've looked for MXPX stuff on SoundCloud in my own free time, he's come up a lot. And I think we've talked about him on our Reliant K podcast (laughs) that that we're doing right now. I talked about it like we're not currently doing it. So here's his cover of This Week the Trend. something he's doing because we didn't get enough versions of this song after i mentioned the piano Mm -hmm. in the proper studio version of this Mm -hmm. song we didn't get enough other versions to compare but i guess instead of doing the piano thing he's got some like he's just doing this like rhythm guitar Mm -hmm. and he's keeping giving it that bright sound yeah so maybe you don't need the piano like i thought you do but i feel like if we heard the studio album version without the piano it would sound like a much different song but if you do replace it which is sort of like a plucking mm-hmm. guitar thing, like sort of what he's doing here. And he gives it with the vocals a little bit more of that 2000s emo vibe. Yeah. Also, the bass is a lot higher in the mix here, and it's a bit of a Lucy kind of like, not Lucy the name, like loose, kind of a, like a loose, like boom, boom kind of bass, mm-hmm. kind of like a real like like basement pop punk sound. So it kind of gives it a fun sort of youthful like, sound (laughs) yeah listen to that bass I feel like I'm listening to Blink-182 cover a uh, Reliant K song it's funny you should mention that because my comment was sounds slightly more like Blink (laughs) that was what I wrote in my notes so that is this week the trend and that is this week's end to our podcast so as we said before don't forget to call 402-95-SADIE if you want to leave us a voicemail send us an email to sadiehawkinspod at gmail.com or dm us or just leave a comment leave a comment on our instagram or twitter which are both Sadie Hawkins Pod. Have a great week. Uh, Have a great week. Thanks for listening. Thanks for listening. And get out there and... (laughs) Have a good time. (laughs) I know we have an outro. But don't do anything we wouldn't do. No. (laughs) This week the trend is don't do anything we wouldn't do. Just repeated what you said. We just wasted... 93 minutes of your life Woo!